we're going to talk about what's going on in the marketplace and what to do about it. So a minute ago, we talked about what's going on in the marketplace, market update, and now we're going to dive into what the opportunities are, what to do about it, which strategies are working right now in the marketplace. Uh, and by the way, this presentation is sponsored by the Texas RIAs and Flipping.com, the number one place on the internet to get started flipping in real estate. The Texas RIAs is the largest by far network of real estate investor associations in the great state of Texas with chapters in Austin, Dallas, Houston, in San Antonio, over 100,000 members, 150,000 members, participants, and attendees going all the way back to 2003. So the question is, why do you care and why does that matter? Well, the reason you probably should care is because real estate, you see, is local. Laws are local. Contracts are local. Contractors are local. Buyers, sellers, local. Houses are local. Everything about real estate is local. There's, there's thousands of YouTube videos that talk about how to invest in real estate. They all talk about how to do it anywhere. Well, how to do it anywhere is how to do it at 30,000 feet. Real estate is not bought and sold at 30,000 feet. Real estate is bought and sold at zero feet. So if you want to know what neighborhoods to invest in here and, and, and what strategies work here and what's legal and not legal here, right, and where do you get your power team and money and resources here, where do you get all of that? You get that at your local Real Estate Investor Association. And again, they say if you have the slightest interest in, in, in real estate, the first thing to do is to go connect uh, with your local real estate investor association. So we are live and we are simulcasting. If you are watching on GoToWebinar, you are live. If you are, on the other hand, on uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, or Twitch, you may or may not be live. But if you ever like to come to some live training, just go to flipping.com slash events because we have vast training continuously and the, and the calendar is on there. Uh, where to start? Let's start the conversation by asking where to get started. And I get this question a lot. All of you here are here for different reasons. Uh, and you're probably all trying to figure out what your problem is that you're trying to solve for you, right? And everybody's a little different. So people ask me all the time, like, where do I get started? Should I do, for example, residential or should I do commercial? Uh, should I do uh, active or should I do passive, right? And my answer would be they're all great because we do them all, we love them all, we have support and resources. I invest in all four of those quadrants and I love them all. But the question I'm gonna ask you to ask yourself is, what's the problem that you're trying to solve? For example, if you tell me I'm here because I want to quit my job, supplement my income, maybe I wanna make an extra 50 or $100,000 in the next 12 months, and I wanna do it doing real estate but I want to do it in a scalable way. I want to do it even if I have little or no money. If, if that's your problem, side hustle, quit job, make money with or without money, uh, then I'm going to say you need to flip houses. The fastest way to make $100,000, even if you have no money, is to flip houses. And we're going to talk about all kinds of different flipping strategies. Now, if you tell me that's not what I'm here for, I'm really here looking to build wealth. I'm looking to build my wealth. I want to be wealthier. Uh, in the future that I'm going to say you should buy rental properties. In my opinion, everybody should buy rental properties. I told you my story a little while ago. Back in 2003, I bought a bunch of rental properties. And what happened? The tenants paid off the mortgages and they doubled and doubled and doubled in value. Right? And, and 20 years from now, what's going to happen to the houses you own right now? They're going to double and double and double in value. That's just how it works. Right? And tenants pay off the mortgages. So everybody should own rental properties, in my opinion. Now, if you say, but that's really not what I'm here for. My problem, what I'm here to do, is I have the money, I already have the money. I got, I got a pile of money in my IRA, in my 401k, or maybe I have a bunch of money in my bank or my pocket. I just wanna make money with my money. I wanna invest in something that is safe and high return. I'm gonna say, if that's what you're here for, I would advise you to invest in commercial syndications. Uh, commercial syndications, on average, have twice the return of the stock market and half the risk, okay? Wealthy people do not invest in the stock market. Wealthy people invest in private equity. That's not listed, not publicly listed property, privately listed things, that's, that's pr pr private equity. The most common private equity, commercial real estate, because it has twice the return of the stock market. And once you learn about commercial real estate, you would never go back to the stock market. And if you, if you don't believe me, here's what you do. Ask a financial advisor, what do you think of commercial real estate? You know what they're going to tell you? 
Oh, you don't, you don't want to do that. That's, that's a bad idea. They hate commercial real estate. And the reason they hate commercial real estate is because when their clients figure out about commercial real estate, they lose 100% of their clients. Because nobody goes back to the stock market after they learn about commercial syndications because it's twice the return and half the risk. But if you say, but you still haven't gotten it, Phil, that's not what I'm here for. I want to do the million dollar deals. I want to make a million, two million, three million dollars a year. I want to do the big, big deals. Then I'm going to say you should be syndicating commercial properties. You should be sponsoring properties as a syndicator because that's where you make a million dollars or more per deal. Now, the only catch is a commercial flip is typically a five-year flip. Typically, a commercial deal is a five-year deal. So yeah, you can make big money, but it's not fast money. So all of these are great things to do, but which is the right one for you really just depends on kind of what you're here for. So for example, do a quick poll of the audience. Uh, how many of you are here based on kind of those four quadrants? How many of you are here and in, in, in your biggest goal, you wanna make an extra, let's say 100,000 or more in the next year? Who's, who's looking to make money in the next year? That's your primary goal, okay. How many of you are here saying, well, I'm really here looking more for long-term wealth? Who's more looking for long-term wealth? Okay, great. How many of you are here because you say, I have a pile of money, I just wanna double my money, I wanna make money with my money? Who's here because they wanna make money with their money? Okay, great. And then who's here looking for the big deals? Who's looking to do the multi-million dollar deals? Okay, so I mean, multi great, they're, they're all great. Um, we're gonna get started by talking about this kind of in this order. Most people start here, that's where most of you were. I'm gonna say everybody should do that, my opinion, but then you're gonna keep the best. You know, our, my, my philosophy with rental properties is, is the Bluebell ice cream philosophy. We eat all we can and, and we sell the rest, right? And I, I keep all the rental properties I can and I, and I sell enough to pay for my life and my lifestyle. Okay, can't, can't keep them all, right? Because if you keep them, they don't make any money, but you flip them, they make money. So, uh, so we, we love rental properties. Uh, now, when you have more money than you need to pay your bills, you're gonna wanna make money with your money and you're gonna want somebody else to do all the work. So you're gonna wanna do that passively. You're gonna start investing in commercial syndications. And you know, when you invest in commercial syndications, you learn about commercial syndications because you meet the sponsors, you see the deal, you get a copy of the business plan, and then you watch what happens. It's pretty typical that if you put $50,000 into a commercial deal, you get 100,000 back, right? Most of these deals would be structured to double your money. So you put 50 in, you get 100 back, you just got paid $50,000 to learn how it works. And then you're like, well, that was pretty cool, but the guy I invested my 50,000, he just made 2 million. Right? And I like two million more than 50,000, so then you're gonna go be that guy, right? And you're gonna start sponsoring the deals yourself. Um, so most of you, uh, and we do all of these things. We love them all, we support them all. We have resources and training for all of these different quadrants, and we recommend you do it all. Most of you are here. Uh, oh, if you're doing commercial, let's do a quick QR code. If you're looking specifically for commercial training, we do have commercial training, right? I'm gonna start with the residential, but if you really wanna get training on doing commercial, we love commercial, just take a quick snapshot. And again, we have all these resources. We love to hook you up with resources that are gonna help you with whatever the, the, the journey that, that you're on. Uh, but that'll give you some really good resources and uh, free training for uh, commercial real estate investing. Okay, so, um, but most of you, uh, clicked on, or I should say, uh, said you were kind of in quadrant one or quadrant two. So let's start with quadrant one and quadrant two. What's that? Oh, well, you got to be fast with the phone. Yeah. You got it? All right. It's okay. I'm gonna, but you got to be fast on the phone there. Got it? All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So let's get started on uh, quadrants one and quadrants uh, two. See, now my clicker is not working. There we go. All right. So good news, if you're in quadrant one or quadrant two, we have a dozen ways that we can help you. Uh, in fact, I'm going to teach you 11 different ways that you can flip houses, and then we're going to teach you to hold the best. And there's rental properties, there's specific areas uh, where you hold. Uh, we have heat maps, these animated heat maps that show you down to the street level which parts of the city to flip and which parts of the city to hold. And it's going to surprise you when we get into that detail. But let's talk about uh, some of the detail. Oh, uh, a little more about me. Uh, my name is Phil Grove. I became a real estate investor on December 15, 2003. I've done over 1,200 deals. I own $30 million in rental properties. Uh, I've made a lot of money over the years. Uh, and I've actually taught, uh, you know, literally over 100,000 people how to invest in real estate. 
in some form or another. Um, these are some of the deals that made me money. I don't have time to go through them all, but I do up to a real estate transaction a week in some shape, form, variety, or another. Uh, and what that does is it creates what I call money in big chunks. Now that sounds great, right? Money in big chunks, but I'm not here to sound good. I'm here to teach you. So how does a business actually work? Fundamentally, the way the business works is as follows. We do things to get people with problems to call us. So what kind of problems are we looking for? People that have a house they don't want, a mortgage they can't afford. Problems to, to entrepreneurs are what? Opportunities. Big problems are what? Big opportunities. Okay, so if you're thinking like, I don't want any problem, you're thinking, I don't want to be an entrepreneur. We are real estate entrepreneurs. We help the world by solving the world's problems. Specifically, we solve real estate problems. So I'm going to give you all a bunch of really powerful solutions to really common problems. And if you help people solve their problems, that's how the world will, will reward you. So I'll give you some specifics. I found somebody facing foreclosure, big problem, and I gave them an out, uh, an alternative, uh, something called a short sale that allowed them to sell their house without having to bring money to the table, without de destroying their life and their credit. And I made $16,000 helping somebody solve their problem. Uh, REO stands for real estate, a bank owned property. Banks don't want to own real estate. That's a problem. I took this off the bank's hands and I flipped it and I made $36,000. Uh, I had a legal problem, I had to sell a house by Friday. Okay, a realtor cannot sell your house by Friday. I can, right, wholesaled it, made $5,000. Uh, got a property subject to my specialty, no money, no credit, flipped it, made $68,000. Okay, $5,600 on an assignment and, um, let's see, uh, $6,000 on, uh, on a mortgage assignment. The clicker is not working very well. Uh, Ten thousand dollars on a wholesale, uh, twenty hundred on a small referral, twelve thousand four hundred for a large referral. The way this business works is as follows: We do things to get people with problems to call us, and here's the really beautiful part: for every problem that exists, there is no exception. For every problem that exists, for every property that exists, for every address that exists, we have a strategy, a solution that satisfies their needs, solves their problem, it's about helping people, solves their problem, and gets us paid. We can help motivated sellers, non-motivated sellers, free and clear, hopelessly underwater. Sometimes we get singles, sometimes we get doubles, sometimes we get home runs. Sometimes I work on a lead, a deal, an opportunity, a problem for six months, and after six months I make $5,000. And I'm like, oh man, six months for $5,000? Yeah, I could have made more money working at Walmart. Thank goodness I'm not working on just one lead at a time. Sometimes my phone rings and that phone call makes me $55,000 in 48 hours. I'm like, oh man, I wish every time my phone rang I made $55,000 in 48 hours, but that's not how it works either. That's maybe one in 100 phone calls. So the question is, how often do you get 100 phone calls? That depends on how much marketing that you do, how many deals that you look at. Do you get 100 phone calls a week, 100 phone calls a month, or 100 phone calls a year? That depends on you and how much marketing that you do. So there's two essential skills I have to teach you, and I'm going to teach you these skills right now. The first and foremost skill is marketing. Marketing is finding the deal, generating the lead. A lead is just a name and number of somebody that might want to sell real estate. You need to spend 85% of your time and money on marketing, right? Generating leads, finding the deals, and then you outsource pretty much everything else. The next skill we have to learn is strategy. Strategy is doing the deal, solving the problem. We buy houses, we help people sell houses and get rid of houses and mortgages they don't want or can't afford. We do that in a variety of different ways and it solves a variety of different problems. So when you put these two skills together, you have what? Marketing and strategy, finding deals, doing deals, finding problems and solving problems. So I'm gonna teach you 65 different methods of finding off-market, because we only buy off-market wholesale properties. And then I'm gonna teach you a dozen different strategies to help people solve their problem, creatively solve their problem, get yourself paid. And by the way, half of the marketing methods are completely free. And nine of the 12 investing strategies are actually no money and no credit strategies. And when you learn how to buy real estate with no money and no credit, then how many properties can you buy? Yeah, all of them. How many would you like to buy? All of them. So when I throw out a question, if you just yell back all of them, you're probably going to get it right. Just, just to set you up, okay. So these are the two skills we're going to learn. Marketing strategy, finding deals, doing deals, finding problems, and solving problems. 
let's get started with the marketing. Oh, actually, first let me tell you a story. This is my first deal. This is the very first house I flipped on December 15, 2003. Now, um, on December 14, 2003, a little bit more of the story, I was scared to death. I was actually being coached and mentored by the guys that ran the RIA back then. I called them both on the phone on December 14, 2003. I'm scared. Are you sure this is going to work? I don't want to lose any money. It took two seasoned, experienced real estate investors pulling me, kicking and screaming over the starting blocks to get me to do that very first deal. So if you're scared, I get it, I can relate, and I can help. But I had one other thing that was also motivating me to take action. I was in a job I no longer loved, and I was in a career I no longer loved. I'm going to tell you guys, if you're spending your time doing something you don't love doing, you need a do something different with your life plan. And that's exactly where I was on December 15, 2000. I needed a different life. I got to tell you, you get one life, and it just <laughs> races by. My wife and I recently had a baby boy, and this last weekend, I noticed there's a 15-year-old running around in my house. It's like, what happened? He's taller than me. It's like, I fed him a little bit, but he's taller than me. It's like, what happened? What happened to the last 15 years of my life? It's just like, it's just, it's a blur. It's just, it went by. It's just gone, right? And, and I got to tell you, you know, it's just racing by, guys. If you're not on a trajectory to getting the life that you want, if you're not reaching your God-given potential, maybe we need to change the trajectory. You know, we actually sponsor a show on YouTube where we interview people in this network that are typically now millionaires or multimillionaire real estate investors just from this network. So I don't know any other network that can show somebody on a weekly basis that's a millionaire typically or a multimillionaire from being part of this network, right? And we always ask the same question. We always get the same answer. What is your biggest regret? I wish I started sooner. Find me a real estate investor millionaire on this planet that will not tell you, I wish I started sooner. So like now, now would be good. Now would be good. So <clears throat> let's talk a little bit more about that first deal. By the way, is it hot in here or is that my imagination? I see it's hot in here. I mean, you mind if I take off my jacket? We're warmed up here. I'm going to take off my jacket. It's like, I'm, what's that? Well, I got some water. I'm just, it's just kind of warm up here. So, and, and you're, you're waving me. I'm like, it's not me. It's, it's, it's everybody's hot. Okay, so I'm going to take off my jacket. Okay, so um, talk a little bit more about the first deal. Your first deal, by the way, is your most important deal. Kind of like your first kiss. Life-changing experience. Everybody remembers their first kiss. Everybody remembers their first deal. I'll tell you about mine. Uh, it took me six months to do my first deal. I, I was actually kind of a slow starter. Uh, got it under contract using a contract I got right here at the RIA. Uh, bought it using OPM, other people's money. Thousand private money lenders is this network. Uh, so I used other people's money to buy the property. Uh, got a contractor right here at the RIA to fix it for me. Uh, I got a, uh, a realtor here at the RIA to sell it for me. Uh, I got an attorney and title company here at the RIA to close it for me. And I went to that very first closing. and picked up that very first check for $15,384.26. I remember that. And you know, when they handed me that check, it was kind of like you unscrewed the cap, popped out the old brain, popped in the new brain. Because right up until the moment they handed me that check, right up until that second, I was a real estate investor based on theory. I wasn't even sure I believed the theory. I don't know if this is going to work. Not sure about that. I'm at that stage right. right now. What's that? I'm at that stage right now. You're at that stage right now. Yeah, that's exactly where I was. I right? Thing. Well, that's your first deal is your most important deal. Yeah. Right? Now, the second they handed me that check, though, something happened. Like a switch flipping, I became a real estate investor based on experience. I didn't know anything different except I knew it actually worked. And what I realized when they handed me that check is if I did this and this and this again, I get another check. Right? It worked the first time. If I did this, this, and this again, I get another check. But the really big deal, the life-changing deal, what I realized when they handed me that check at that moment, I realized that I would never, ever, 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 for the rest of my life, ever have to work for somebody else. Ever, 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 never, ever again. And I have not worked for anybody else, even for one second since they handed me that check. So if you're new, right, and getting started, my first piece of advice is you need to focus yourself like a laser beam right, that, on that very first deal. That very first deal will change your life. Deals two, three, four, five, and six combined, not as hard as deal number one. 
So I told you I was going to tell you what I did right. I'm also going to tell you what I did wrong. I made one big rookie mistake right out of the chute that everybody makes. I spent all that time finding the deal. I found the deal. As soon as I found the deal, I kind of put my marketing on hold. I picked up a hammer. I managed some contractors. I worked on the deal. I finished the deal. I got the check only to wake up the next day and realize I had absolutely nothing to do. Well, except start the whole business all over again. And this gets me to my very first takeaway. And here it is. And this is the biggest lesson I'm going to teach you today. The business of being a real estate investor is the business of finding deals. It's all about finding deals. Why? Because you make your money on the buy. What does that mean? As soon as a property gets under contract, whatever money was going to be made or not made, done. Right at that second. Yeah, you get the money at the end on the sell, but you make the money on the buy. And once you realize that, you realize you always should spend 85% of all of your time and money on marketing, looking for the next deal. Because the next deal is always more important than the deal you have now. And hint, the deals you're looking for are not in the MLS. The MLS is the multiple listing service. It's the retail market for real estate. It's where realtors sell real estate. It's where all the people in the world compete with each other to see who will pay the most. And when you're competing against all the people in the world, some of those people are stupid. And you don't want to compete against stupid. Well, you don't want to win competing against stupid. Now, don't get me wrong, folks. I love the MLS. I adore the MLS. Why do I love and adore the MLS? Because after I buy off-market wholesale real estate, where do I then want to go to resell it? I'm in the MLS. It has been proven that any property put in the MLS will sell for the most it could possibly be sold for. That's never where you're going to find heavily discounted wholesale real estate. The very best deal in the entire MLS would rarely be a deal I would ever even take a second look at. So finding deals, right? But here's the rookie mistake. Actually, I didn't really make clear on the rookie mistake. The rookie mistake is this, right? They find a deal and they put their market on hold, right? And, and then they finish the deal and they got no more deals. So they turn back on the marketing and they find another deal. They make money, great, but they put the market on market hold to work on the deal, right? So they reset the marketing. Uh, and then they find another deal, they do a deal, and their income, it goes up and down and up and down with big gaps in between. You need your income to go up, 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 up. And the way to do that is you have to always, always be looking for the next deal. You have to keep the pipeline filled with deals. You never stop marketing. It's the engine of your business. You never turn off the engine. So <clears throat> spend 85% of your time and money looking for the next deal and never stop marketing. That's the lesson. But finding deals. Once I realized this whole shoot match is really about finding deals, then I started to systematize the process of finding deals. And eventually I discovered 65 ways to find deals. Actually, it's not really accurate to say I invented 65 ways. What would be more accurate is to say I found 65 things at work and I started to do those things. In fact, I need to teach you all a really important lesson, maybe the most important lesson I'm going to teach you. But for me to teach you this next lesson, first I need to unteach you all something. So, go, so bear with me. I need to unteach you all something. When you guys are in elementary school, if you looked over at the paper next to you and you copied down the answers, that was called what? Cheating. cheating. And you're all told that cheating is what? Bad. Bad. Wrong. Okay. We're not a bunch of little kids. We're no longer in elementary school. Going forward, I need you all to unlearn that. Because going forward, guess what? The cheating. cheating is the shortcut. Like, what am I saying up here? What I'm trying to say is this. There's nothing you're trying to do. There's absolutely nothing that you are trying to figure out that I and other people haven't already done and figured out. Everything, and I mean everything, and I mean absolutely everything about this business is completely understood. We know what's in the soil. We know the zoning. We know the guys that write the zoning. We know the appreciation rate down to the street address across all the streets, across all the major cities, across the state of Texas. We know the exact letters to send to the exact mailing list. We know the exact offers to make. We know the exact words to say. We know exactly what objections we're going to get. We know exactly how to overcome objections. We even know, on average, how many contracts we're going to get signed 
for every 20,000 letters we send out, everything, and I mean everything, and I mean absolutely everything about this business is completely understood. And once I realized everything I was trying to do and everything I was trying to figure out, other people had done and figured out, I stopped trying to figure everything out and I just started to, here's this word, copy, right, copy the top 65 methods of actually finding off-market wholesale deals. And I'm going to talk about these. Now, some of these methods or campaigns take time and some take money. When you get started, you probably have more time and less money. Once you get going, you have more money and less time. I will be honest with you, I don't spend any time anymore on marketing. I outsource 100%. But when you're getting started, you're probably going to insource more. So then what are all these different marketing methods? Well, let me teach you a whole bunch. The first set of strategies have to do with buying marketing lists. You can buy marketing lists of motivated sellers. Right? What do you do with a marketing list? You do marketing to them. You can send them letters, you can send them postcards, or you can call them, or you can text them, or you can have a CRM system put a voicemail in their voicemail box even without calling them. Okay? Or you can knock on their door, or you can do what I do and use a chat bot to chat and negotiate with them and schedule appointments with them while you're sleeping. Or you can do a combination of those things, which is called a multi-touch campaign. That's how you turn a lead, all right, from a list into a deal, into an appointment that turns into a deal. There's a whole process for doing that. So what are some of the popular marketing lists? Well, you can get a tax late list. This is a list of people that are late paying their property taxes. A pre-foreclosure list. This is a list of people that are 30 or 60 or 90 days late paying their mortgage. You get a divorce list. There's a list of people that have filed for divorce. Two people were combining their income to pay a mortgage. Now, one of them's gone. Well, the one that's not gone is having to pay the mortgage by themselves, and they probably are having trouble doing exactly that. You know, you can get a list of people who've inherited a house from somebody that passed away, uh, people whose credit scores are starting to go down, people that just got dismissed from bankruptcy. Certainly a lot of financial distress there. You can get a non-owner occupied list. There's a list of people that own a house where they don't live in the house they own, right? Technically, those are landlords. And a lot of those people are what we call accidental landlords. They couldn't sell the house, so they rented it out. Or they moved away and they let an ex-spouse or family member or friend or neighbor stay at a house, or they inherited a house with a tenant in it. They didn't really plan on being a landlord. And very often, they eventually become motivated sellers. Right? You can get a list of people who rent to people on public assistance. You can get a code enforcement list. You know the city is already driving around issuing citations for abandoned houses, hoarder houses, deferred maintenance houses. You can get the city to give you a list of every problem property in the city. You can even get an expired listing list. This is a list of people that hired a realtor, tried to sell it, and it didn't sell. So what do we know about these people? We know 100% of these people would like to sell their house, probably now more than ever. But they probably need solutions that realtors don't offer. Hello, that's exactly what investors do offer. Questions? So I was yeah. in the tax assessor's office and I bought some tax things. Before. Great. How would you use your AI tool to or toss up and see? How do you use an AI tool? First, you have to get the list and then you have to do a skip trace. So you use a filter to basically f get a, a, a phone number uh, for everybody. You got to match it against a do not call, Should right? Search, What's that? Should people search? That's what I've been using. Uh, uh, that there's, there's different tools than that. We use something called Flipping Pro, but use it, one of these tools. Uh, and then you feed it into a CRM system, right? Flipping Pro does it all automatically, and it'll start texting people, right? You know. uh, Skip Trace will give you a phone number and an email address, so you can email and text them. And you can call them and leave a voicemail as well. And you can even send them a, a text or a, a, a postcard if you want, and you can even knock on their door. So you can do a multi-touch campaign, okay? Uh, what are some of the other marketing methods? If you've got a website, you can get leads on the internet. Uh, bayonet signs, a little uh, plastic sign say we buy houses. Uh, why do you see those signs? Because those signs actually work. Online ads work. Um, <clears throat> email, <clears throat> magnetic signs, uh, a little sign on the side of your car, you buy the sign once, you get leads forever. Door hangers, you don't want to pay postage for 10 cents a door, you can have a door hanger, a door flyer put on every door in a neighborhood. Uh, here's one that's pretty much free, uh, driving for dollars. Sometimes I'm just driving around, and I see a tarp on a roof. They might as well be waving a big red flag. Desperate motivated seller, please buy my house. I mean, think about this. Somebody's most valuable asset, a house, has a serious problem, okay, a leak, 
And their solution was to do what? To go buy a $5 tarp at Home Depot. How come they didn't fix the roof? No money. Same guy not fixing the roof, probably not paying the mortgage. Sooner or later, an investor is going to buy that property. What are the other marketing methods? Oh, wait, we interrupt this program for a special announcement. Actually, I made the announcement. So, yes, we have some training coming up. Um, and by the way, I, uh, I teach the training myself. I enjoy teaching this stuff. Uh, so these workshops are coming up. I will be doing it. This is practical, actionable, detailed, step-by-step -step training. We call this Texans, teaching Texans how to invest in Texas using strategies that work here. All the strategies, all the marketing campaigns. We even teach the sales closes. What are sales closes? Closes are literally the exact words you say, the scripts you say to get somebody to accept your offer on their property, to sign a contract. So I'll give you an example. Recently, I got a woman here in Texas. I said some magic words. I just said some magic words. And I got a woman, because of these magic words, you know, Jack has the magic beanstalk beans, right? I have magic closing words. If I found a woman in Texas, I said magic words to her. And after saying these magic words, she gave me her house. Just gave me the house. Beautiful house. Nothing wrong with the house. Perfect condition house. A lot of equity in the house. She just gave me the house. She didn't have to give her any money at all. Zero money. She gave me the house. She said, thank you for taking this valuable, wonderful house that is in perfect condition. Thank you for that because of these magic words. Who's feeling a little skeptical right now? Raise your hand if you feel skeptical right now. Okay, who's not feeling skeptical? Seriously, you believe that? Holy cow, you believe me. Wow, no, I didn't offer any money at all. I told you, no money at all. So I just said magic words, and after magic words, this woman just gave me her house. Just hand me the keys, gave me the deed. Nothing, perfect house, and didn't have to give her a single penny. She said, thank you for taking the house. So who's a little skeptical, right? Raise your hand if you're skeptical, okay? I want you to be skeptical. I'm baiting you to be skeptical. Please remain skeptical. Because the more skeptical you are right now, the more impressed you're gonna be in a couple of minutes when I show you what I actually did, okay? But those are the closes, which are a lot of fun to teach. So anyway, the workshop is live and in person. I recommend you come live. And uh, we also simulcast online. Uh, three days, I teach it myself, so you can come and join us. And it's a three-city tour. Oh, yeah, and we also have a commercial workshop. I recommend you do that part one, part two, right? You can go right to the commercial, but most people start with part one, and then they go on to the commercial as part two. So again, three-city tour, pick the date that works good for you, best for you. If none of the dates work, if you have a conflict, for example, if your daughter's getting married, then I suggest that you cancel the wedding, okay? Because the most important thing that's going to change your life in a good way is this going to be this workshop. All right. Uh, so again, we'll, we'll, we'll give you a form to sign up. You can sign up for free. And for you guys online, we'll post a link here in a minute. Okay, but let's keep going with the marketing. What are the other methods of finding deals? Letter of intent. What is a letter of intent? A letter of intent is an offer. So the question is, who should make an offer to? And the answer is everybody. I'm going to give you all your first homework assignment. Tomorrow, I want each of you to make 300 people an offer in their home. Yeah, send 300 offers to 300 people. Yeah, I'm not kidding. You see, here's how investors think. Ready, fire, aim. You make the offer, and then you negotiate. You make the offer, and then you do your due diligence. You make the offer, and then you look for the money. You make the offer, and then, and only then, do you think about it. You should make everybody an offer. Why not? Do you know here in Texas, every time that you make somebody an offer, you know you get four different options? You might want to write them down. Option number one, you could buy a house because they might say yes. If you make 300 offers, if you take 300 shots on goal, what do you think is going to happen? Something's going in even if you suck. And with practice, what happens? More of them go in, because with practice, you don't suck. So yeah, option number one, you can buy a house. Option number two, you can terminate the offer after you make it. No risk. Do you know that Texas State Promulgated Contract gives the buyer the unilateral right to terminate the contract if they change their mind? Option number three, you can renegotiate the offer after you make it. You know that it's much, much, much easier to renegotiate than it is to negotiate, especially when everybody's calling you back and saying they want to sell, i.e. they want to negotiate. Option number 
before you can sell the offer, the contract itself, your equitable interest, the contract to somebody else that has money. Notice only one of those four options even required you to have any money to buy a house. Just make offers and give yourself options. So why are there so many different marketing strategies? Business cards, FISBO, for sale by owner, that's cold calling. Why would somebody try to sell their own house? Maybe they're lazy, maybe they're crazy, maybe they need solutions realtors don't offer. Why so many different marketing methods? Well, the question is, would you rather fish with a hook or would you rather fish with a net? And the answer is you need to learn to fish with a net. And the reason is because this business is a numbers game and now I am going to teach you the numbers. I'm going to teach you something right now that it took me two years of hard work in the trenches to figure out. So I'm going to shave two years of your learning curve right now. By 2005, I had been a real estate investor for two years. And here's what I figured out. I generated about 400 leads. A lead is the name and number of somebody that might want to sell a house. So I've been looking at a house every couple of days for the first couple of years. And here's what I figured out. When I did paid marketing, things like direct mail, for every $100 I spent in direct mail, I got one qualified, motivated seller lead. When I did free marketing, things like just driving for dollars, for every three hours I spent on free marketing, I got one qualified, motivated seller lead. Then I discovered that on average, for every 20 leads that I got, I made at least $20,000 net profit on a house, on a deal. So let me run the numbers for you. That means as a rookie, every time I drove around for 60 hours, I made at least $20,000 profit. As a rookie, every time I sent out $2,000 in direct mail, I made at least $20,000 in profit. Okay, so follow the math. Okay, spend $2,000, make $20. Spend $2,000, make $20. Spend $4,000, make $40. Spend $8,000, make $80. Spend $16,000, make $160. Spend $32,000. You don't have to spend it all at once, by the way. Make $320,000 net profit. Are you starting to like the numbers? took me two years to figure that out. But after two years in the trenches, what I realized is, holy cow, this whole business is just a numbers game, and now I know the numbers. And by the way, the numbers are much better now. Why are the numbers much better now? Well, and not just better for me, better for everybody. Because the houses are a lot more expensive than they were 20 years ago. Everything I'm telling you here, you know, multiply by three because the, the prices are higher, the profits are higher, everything's bigger, right, than it used to be just because things have become more expensive. But still, you're starting to like the numbers. Once I realized this, this was a game changer for me. I started to see my business in a completely different way. And now I think about my entire business like it's just a little black box. And we're going to call that little black box a marketing machine. And the way that little black box works is every time I stick $100 worth of marketing in one end, $1,000 worth of net profit pops out the other end. Now, if you had a little black box, every time you shoved a $100 bill in one end, a $1,000 bill popped out the other end, how many dollars would you stick in the box? All of them. And I started spending money on marketing like a drunken sailor. I started spending thousands of dollars a month on marketing. And then I started spending tens of thousands of dollars a month on marketing. And then I hired two full-time six-figure guys who spend 100% of their time spending my money on marketing. One just runs ads, the other does the analytics. Right? And today I spend up to $100,000 a month on marketing. Because once you figure out it's just a numbers game, once you know the numbers, you dial it in and then what do you do? You dial it up. You just keep turning up the dial until the dial doesn't go up anymore. Sometime later, actually wrote a book on how to do this. I don't offer the book anymore. I've discovered it's not that helpful. Uh, if reading books turn people to millionaires, you know the library should be filled with millionaires. And they're not. And the reason I figured out that real estate is not that helpful to learn in a book is because it's not that complicated. I went to engineering school. That was complicated. I'd take calculus, calculus two, calculus three. By the time I took calculus three, I didn't remember calculus one and two. It was really complicated. But I've never had to solve a differential equation to flip a house. It's not that complicated, but unlike engineering and calculus a mile deep, real estate's a mile wide. There's a million details. And the thing about learning real estate is really not learning a skill, it's learning a language. But you can't learn a language from reading a book, can you? Go read 100 books on how to speak Spanish. What's going to happen? You're going to learn how to count to 10. That's about how far I got. There's only one way to learn a language. How do you learn a language? Do it. You want to learn Spanish? Go to Spain. You want to eat or go to the bathroom? You learn Spanish. Right? And you have to immerse yourself. And that's why real estate investor associations are so important. 
because you got to spend time with people that are doing it and you got to hear things two, three, five, 10, 20 times, right? It was not until my wife and I joined the local real estate investor association and started spending time hearing things two, three, four, five times, right? That we actually picked up enough of the details to be able to do it. So I'm about to get into the final part of the presentation where we're going to talk about the strategies, arguably the mechanics of how these deals work, maybe the most interesting part of the presentation. But if you remember at the beginning of the presentation, I said, my job is to make you all into educated contributing members of this community. And we really want you to be participatory and educated and contributing. Uh, because we, we figured out a long time ago, that's, that's how everybody makes money. We have these meetings all over Texas, and we always have new people that come to the meetings. And we usually call the new people tourists. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, honey, let's go check out the RIA, right? And there's nothing wrong with being a tourist. But we, but we also figured out a long time ago, nobody actually makes money being a tourist. We need people to be active, buying, selling, partnering, borrowing, lending. That's where money gets made. But I also figured out, unfortunately, I can't turn people into real estate investors in just 45 minutes. If I could figure out how to sprinkle pixie dust on everybody's head and turn them into real estate investors in 45 minutes, yeah, that would be awesome. I don't know how to do that. But I can, and I have, on many occasions, turn people into real estate investors over a period of 24 hours. Or maybe it would be more accurate to say 24 hours spread out over three days, giving us the time to get through all the nitty gritty details of how this business works. And this is why I enjoy teaching the Flipping Real Estate Investor Workshop, sponsored by Flipping.com and the Texas REAS. Practical, actionable, detailed, step-by-step, -step, Texans teaching Texans how to invest in Texas, where we go through all the strategies that work in Texas that are legal in Texas. Nobody else teaches this stuff. We teach all 65 ways to find the off-market properties and even the closes, how to partner, how to get access to private money, Thousands of the most successful investors in the state of Texas got started at this workshop, The Real Deal, Texans Teaching Texans How to Invest in Texas. Uh, we even sponsor a show where every week we interview somebody that's typically now a millionaire or even a multimillionaire from doing this. We're doing it live and in person. I recommend you come live and in person. We're also doing it simulcast on Zoom where you can go back and forth. Uh, some of the things we're going to learn. I'm going to show you heat maps that nobody else has. Down, the, We can drown, drill down to the street level exactly which streets to buy and hold in, which streets to fix and flip in. And you're not going to believe which are which, right? you got to know that because it makes a big difference. How to get off-market deals from outsourcing, right? I like to outsource uh, everything. Uh, how about uh, how to get paid offering to remodel houses for free. My best offer and favorite strategy is I offer free house remodeling services and I make a fortune doing exactly that. And it's an incredible, irresistible offer. How about how to get 3% mortgages? So everybody's complaining about interest rates. There's a new loan product I'm gonna tell you about. You get a 3% mortgage with no money down and no credit check, no credit check needed. So no credit needed, no money down, 3% interest. Who would like that mortgage? Raise your hand if you'd like to get rental properties with that mortgage. Sounds unbelievable, doesn't it? No credit check, no money down, 3% interest. It sounds unbelievable. You know what? That's such a good one. I'm going to teach you that in just a minute, right? We're going to go into the details of the workshop, but I'm going to show you that one in just a minute because that's how good that is. Uh, how about how to get AI to talk to your sellers for you? That's a little trick I like to use. Uh, how about how to get uh, uh, virtual assistants? Uh, I have uh, 14 virtual assistants from the Philippines where they speak American English. Uh, and uh, I got 14 of them working for me. And uh, you know the amount of money because of the exchange rate that, that we pay them, these are college graduates and we're paying them what to them is a fortune, what to us is a fraction of what it costs to pay people here. Uh, so we use them and that's a great, uh, great, great for both of us. Uh, so this is just a little snapshot of some of the stuff we're gonna be teaching at the workshop. So in person, you can come online, uh, these are the dates and locations, uh, so pick the date that works for you and come join us. And uh, let me hand out a form. Do you have some of those forms? Okay, can you give me one of those forms? And if you can, don't mind, hand out the form. And Josh, you can hand them out on that side. So uh, pick the date and location. It is free, so we got a special going now. Now I am gonna also tell you another thing that we do. Uh, you are not required to do this, but I'm gonna ask that you do this. I would love to have you also join the RIA. If you have the slightest interest in real estate, you should join your local real estate investor association. And there are huge benefits to being part of the RIA. 
Who would like to have access to 20,000 buyers? Does anybody want a list of 20,000 buyers? You should join the RIA. Who would like to have access to 1,000 private money lenders? Private money is faster, cheaper, better? Yeah, you should join the RIA. Okay, if you join the RIA, this is the only organization in Texas that actively spends money defending the rights of real estate investors. Just a few years ago, we came this close to having the wraparound mortgage become illegal in Texas. If it was not for this organization, it would be illegal today. So if you join the RIA, you get all kinds of benefits for being part of the RIA. When you come to the workshop, you get priority seating, which means you get to sit up front. You get VIP lunches and lunch sessions. If I'm gonna go to an event, I really want to go as a VIP. You get access to our online group. You become a member. You get a money resource guide, a special training program. And we also do special events for our RIA members. So if you have the slightest interest in real estate, you should really join the RIA. You're not required to, but I'm gonna ask that you can and that you do. It's a one-time cost of $250, but we even have a special deal. Drum roll, please. If you join today, you can have it for $100. So the way the form works is pick the workshop you want. The workshop is free, then join the RIA. You don't have to join the RIA. If you don't have the 100 bucks, I get it, but you really should join the RIA and it's totally worth doing it. Now, the form that has this on it, oh, and then you also get invited to the commercial workshop. So that's another thing you wanna do as well. So, and you get a really cool poster. I'll tell you about the poster a little bit later. But let me tell you about the form real quick. Um, the form, and you guys online, you click it online. If you do it right now, you get this for free for the workshop and the discount on the RIA. If you wait, it's not free because normally we charge. Uh, but if you fill it out right now, you get the uh, free and then only $100 for the RIA. You don't have to join the RIA. Please join the RIA. Uh, as far as the form is concerned, um, here's what's on the form. Uh, please print clearly okay because we're going to send you a text and an email with your tickets to the event if we can't read what you put on the form it's going to be very hard and somebody else is going to get your tickets um, also there's there's uh, uh, up at the top of the form there's three dates that's the first of the three days all the workshops are friday saturday and sunday there's one in austin there's one in dallas there's one in houston pick the date that works for you uh, the date that's stamped here is the Friday of the three days. So it just gives you the first date to tell you which date it is. Uh, tell us if you want to come live or online. Uh, I recommend you come live. We will have tables. We're not going to be crammed in like sardines like we are here. So we're going to be tables to write on. Bring a notepad. You're going to take a lot of notes. Uh, you can also attend online. You can even go back and forth if you need to. If you need to leave, you can get online and go back and forth. Uh, and then please join the RIA. You don't have to, but I really want you all to join the RIA. If you don't have the $100, I get it. But if you have $100, if I'm going to spend three days, man, I want to go VIP. I want all the benefits, and I want the benefits of being a member of this organization. Uh, down below, tell us a little bit about yourself. There's all kinds of resources that we can connect you with to help you get more successful as a real estate investor. We'll collect the forms at the end of the meeting, so you don't have to fill it out right now. We will collect it at the end. If you don't have a pen or something, we'll come around with pens. But hold on to the form. If you want to start to fill it out, fill it out. If you need to leave, I get it. Uh, just hand your form to them at the desk on the way out. Um, but I want to complete our, so pick the date. And uh, the workshop's all exactly the same. It's the same workshop that just happens to be in three different cities. So it's a three city tour. Uh, if the date does not work for one, just use the date for the other. I personally, when I go to a workshop, I like to go to a city that I don't live in because I just like to get away. I get disconnected from, you know, kids, work, whatever. But that's up to you. Uh, but pick the location and date that works best for you. And like I said, live and online. And for you guys online, just fill out the form right now. If you fill out the form right now, you get it for free as well. Okay, so let's, and I'll, I'll tell you some more details about the event a little bit later, but I want to get back into the training. So we talked about the marketing methods. Now let's get into the strategies and talk about the mechanics of how these deals work. So strategies, people ask me, okay, what's the best strategy? Because there's so many different strategies. Then uh, I'm gonna answer that question for you right now. So what are some of the different strategies? You can do short sales, uh, you can do buy and hold, uh, mortgage assignments, auction options, you can do referrals, wholesaling, you can do contracts for deeds, you can do lease options, house swapping, you can do wraparound mortgages, 
You can do equity partnering, and of course you can do fix and flip. And you can certainly spend a lot of time and money on all that training and education. In fact, my wife and I have spent over $100,000 on training, coaching, and seminars, and books, and, and tapes, and most of it was great. Some of it was not great. It all sounded great. But I don't really feel bad about spending over $100,000 on our education because we've made many millions of dollars from our education. But I do have a little pet peeve at how most people teach and how most people get taught. So when you look at all of these strategies, here's the good news. All of these things work. All of these things can make you money investing in real estate. That's the good news. The bad news is that they each only work in unique situations. Each of these strategies should be thought of as a solution to a specific problem or situation. But remember what I said earlier, your job one is what? Finding the deal, finding the deal. So here's a brand new investor hunting for a deal, does some marketing, and he gets a lead. What's a lead? It's a name and address of somebody that might want to sell real estate. Well, if this guy had gotten the right training, he would have learned how to solve that seller's problem need by doing something called a wraparound mortgage. That's the solution to that person's problem, but that's not the training he got. This guy went to some silly wholesale seminar. All he learned to do is wholesaling, so he's looking for a wholesale deal, but he didn't find one. He found a wrap deal, but he doesn't know how to do that. So now what's he gonna do? He can't make money on that lead, so he's gonna do some more marketing and generate yet another lead. And now, if he only knew how to do a mortgage assignment, he could solve a problem, get a check, but he doesn't know how to do that because remember, he just went to a wholesale seminar, so he's gonna do some more marketing and generate yet another lead. Now, if he only knew how to do an auction option, he could solve a big problem, get himself a big check. But again, he doesn't know how to do that because all he learned how to do is wholesaling, and he's still looking for a wholesale deal. Are you starting to see a problem? This is big rookie problem number two, okay? And this is very common. There's 30,000 YouTube videos that teach people how to get started investing in real estate. What most of that training says is you need to get started by learning one strategy and this is the best one. No, this is the best one. No, no, this is the best one. Well, whatever, you need to learn a strategy and, and make money on that strategy and then later on you can learn some other strategy. And it sounds pretty good and it, and it feels pretty good, but forgive my language when I say this, that is a completely ass backwards way to go about this. Saying that you need to get started by learning one strategy, you need to make money on one strategy before you learn the other strategy, that's kind of like saying you need to go to Las Vegas and learn how to bet on one number on the roulette wheel. And only after you make enough money betting over and over and over again on that one number on the roulette wheel, you can learn how the other numbers work. Well, that's ridiculous. But that's how 95% of real estate investors get started investing in real estate. Is it no surprise 95% of real estate investors give up before they ever get going. So I am going to teach you what the top 5% of investors do. And my advice is to play to be in the top 5% or don't bother because the top 5% make all the money. So this is how I do it and this is how I'm gonna teach you how to do it as well, okay? What I do is I bet on all of the numbers on the wheel and then I spin the wheel a lot. And what do I mean by I bet on all the numbers on the wheel? I use all 12 strategies. I teach all 12 strategies. Why not learn all 12 ways to fill out a contract? Why not learn all 12 ways to solve a problem? You spend time and money to get somebody with a problem to call you. That's called marketing. If there's a way to help them and solve the problem and get paid, you need to help them and solve the problem and get paid. When you know all 12 strategies, we have a solution for everything. We can help motivated sellers, non-motivated sellers. We can help free and clear. We can help hopelessly underwater. Where they owe more money than the house is worth. We can help them, we can solve their need and get ourselves paid. That's betting on all the numbers on the wheel. And then what do you wanna do next? You wanna spin the wheel a lot. And that means look at a lot of deals. Take a lot of shots on goal. So that's what the top 5% of investors do. We do a lot of marketing and we use all the strategies. So let's talk about some strategies. Oh, actually, first let me tell you another story. This was my first big deal. After I was a real estate investor for just over two years, I flipped this house. I actually made $291,000 flipping this house. Pretty good deal. But the more interesting part of the story is I was actually the eighth investor at bat. So what does that mean? Seven other real estate investors looked at this before me and passed on the deal. How's that possible? Seven people passed on a deal to make almost $200,000, $300,000 on a house. How's that even possible? I'm going to tell you it's not just possible. It's actually typical. Let me tell you the rest of the story. First investor walks into this house, said, I'd love to buy your house, but, but you're underwater. You owe more money than the house is worth. You can't afford to sell me the house. Second investor walks into this house and says, I'd love to buy your house, 
but you're in bankruptcy, right? Can't buy a house from somebody in bankruptcy. Third investor walks into this house and says, well, I can help you avoid a foreclosure by doing something called a short sale, but I can't do that while you're in bankruptcy. Plus you have a mid-construction project. I don't, I don't do mid-construction. I walked into this house and I said, my, oh my, oh my, you have a lot of big problems, don't you? Big problem means what? Big opportunity. It took one, two, three, three different strategies to solve the guy's problem. The point is I solved the problem, I got the check. My competition was a bunch of one-trick ponies. Most of my competition is a bunch of one-trick ponies. There's 30,000 YouTube videos that teach people how to be one-trick ponies. One-trick ponies are annoying, they get in the way at times, but they don't last long. Guys, if you think you're going to find pretty houses at big discounts just waiting for you, hanging off of trees, yeah, you're smoking crack, okay? This is what opportunity looks like. A big bundle of problems with a nice pretty bow around it. I want a house where half the house burned down. I want a house that had a meth lab that exploded in the garage. I want a house that flooded. I want a house with mold. I want a house where someone was murdered in the living room. Oh, yeah. You can make a killing on a murder house. I own one. How do you make a killing on a murder house? Seriously. Murder's not common, but stigma's common. What do you think it costs to buy a murder house? Not much. 20 cents on the dollar. And do you know what everybody says when they say that house and they look at that house? They point at that house. They say, that's a murder house. And a year later, when everybody goes by that house, they point at that house and I mean, something bad happened in that house. A couple years later, they're going by that house and they kind of look around. And they're like, something happened somewhere around here. About five years later, they go by that house and what do they say? Nice house. How much? <laughs> Stigmas go away. Somebody gets shot in a bar, it's a crime scene. A few years later, it's a tourist attraction. Yeah. I mean, that's the point. There's all kinds of stigmas, but the bigger point is problems are opportunities. People are running from the problems. No, we run to the problems. I'll give you another example. One of my students recently bought one of those $150,000 Teslas. He paid cash for it. You know what he calls it? He calls it his air car. Air car. H-E-I-R air car. Somebody died without a will. Do you know that two out of three people don't have a will? Light bulb. But they did have 42 heirs. And everybody said, no way, man. There's no way you're going to get 42 people to agree on something. Big problem. Well, he rolled up his sleeves, and it took a little effort. But eventually, he got 42 people to agree that a little bit of something is a whole lot better than a whole lot of nothing. Now he's driving around in a $150,000 air car. Problems are opportunities. Big problems are big opportunities. We help the world by solving the world's problems. You want to be an entrepreneur? Solve problems. We solve real estate problems. We help people. We solve their problems. And we get paid very well to do exactly that. So let me teach you a couple strategies. I got time. I'll do two. The first strategy I'm going to teach you tonight is wholesaling. Easiest one to teach. I'll teach you right now. How does it work? You simply find a property and get it under contract. How much does it cost to get a property under contract? Nothing. Can we all afford that? I think so. Now, after we get a property under contract, instead of buying the property, we're going to sell the contract to another investor for a fee. OK. How much is the fee? Well, let's talk about the fee. It depends. On a small deal, 500 to 5,000. On a medium deal, 10 to 25,000. On a big deal, 25,000 or more. And this is a no money and no risk strategy. I've discovered it's really hard to lose money when you're not spending or investing any money. Nine of the strategies, by the way, are no money and no risk strategies. So let's go into a little more detail. When you come to the workshop, I'm going to teach you the theory. I just taught you the theory. Theory's great. But then I'm going to tell you the story. Because you really learn from seeing how people actually do it. So I'm going to tell you at the workshop, I'm going to tell you probably at least 100 different stories. So let me give you an example. This is Kimberly. She was sitting in the same chairs as you guys. She came to the workshop, and then she went out and did her first deal. This was her first deal. Okay, and, and what did she do? She, I'll tell you the whole story. She was actually in the car with her mom. Her mom was visiting her from out of town. And her mom's like, Kim, where are we going? Oh, well, um, Mom, we're going to get a house under contract. What? 
Kim, are you crazy? What are you talking about? You just graduated from college. You don't have any money. You don't have any credit. You don't even have a job. What do you mean you're getting a house under contract? Don't worry, Mom. I know what I'm doing. So Kim's mom watched Kim walk into this house and offer the seller $265,000 cash for the house, and he signed a contract. Now, obviously, he was a motivated seller. Obviously, they talked on the phone ahead of time. Kim then took that contract, and she posted it out to the network. Remember I said, you really want to be a part of the network? You know we meet every minute of every day online? Do you know that thousands and thousands and thousands of times over the last decade, the members of this community post their deals, their questions, their offers, their resources, their money, their contracts, whatever, back and forth on that network, right? You wanna be on that network. So Kim posted the deal out to the network, and guess what? Several other members of the network wanted to buy that contract, that deal from Kim. And one of the other members of the RIA paid Kim $17,000 for the contract. So Kim just sold her contract to another member of the RIA for $17,000. So now Kim is a believer. Well, actually, Kim was a believer. Now Kim's mom is a believer. So now what would Kim have done with the contract had nobody wanted to buy the contract? What was she done with it? Terminate. Right, terminate. But she didn't need to, did she? So then who bought the contract? Another member of the RIA by the name of Tatiana. Let me tell you about Tatiana. Tatiana paid Kim $17,000 for the contract. It then became Tatiana's contract, right? Cross Kim's name out, right? Write her name in, or really her company's name in, right? Paid Kim $17,000, and then Tatiana bought the property for $265,000. She had the money. She kept it for six months as a month to month rental. After the tenants moved out, she did a renovation and a small addition. And then she sold it after owning it for 12 months. And when she sold it, she made almost $100,000 of net profit. She only had to pay long term capital gains taxes, no income taxes. Do you think Tatiana was pretty happy that Kim found that deal for her? What do you think? Of course. So let's do another poll of the audience, see what we got here. By a show of hands, just out of curiosity, how many of you are cash buyers? Raise your hand if you're a cash buyer. Hmm. All right, let me ask a different question. How much cash do you have to have to make a cash offer? Zero. Well, then how much cash do you actually have to have to be a cash buyer? Zero. You don't have to have any cash to make a cash offer. You don't have to have any cash to be a cash buyer. You just need to know people with cash. So let me ask you guys another question. Does anybody here know somebody that you could call if you got a smoking hot deal to buy a property for a big discount for cash? Does anybody know such a person? For example, who? You. Yeah, what do you think I'm doing up here? <laughs> over here guys and in fairness and in fairness there's hundreds of guys just like me out on that network that would be pleased as punch if you guys got out there got some properties under contract you want it for yourself pitch it back for the group that's why we want you that's why we need you that's why we'll even train you on how to be educated and contributing members but i can tell i have my work cut out for me so let me try this again by a show of hands, how many of you are cash buyers? Raise your hand if you're cash. Oh, fantastic. I love talking to a room full of cash buyers. And the network instantly puts people with cash in connection with people with deals. Instantly puts people with deals in connection with people with cash. You want to be a wholesaler? I got you 20,000 buyers. We got them. You don't need to build a buyers list. We built you the buyers list. Now go do something important, right? Go find the deal. Right? And I said before, you're not going to find your deal in the MLS. The MLS is the the, the retail marketplace. It's the retail pond. It's the pond with the small fish. You guys need to fish in the wholesale pond. Right? That's the pond with the big fish. So where's the wholesale pond? You're sitting in it. Yeah, a large network of real estate investors pitching deals back and forth. Question? Uh, what are the parameters, for example, for you? Yeah. Meaning I go out yeah. Find, find a deal? Yeah, I'm going to teach you the workshop, but I'll give you the quick answer. 70% ARV minus repairs. So what does that mean? If a property is worth, let's say, 100000 fixed up, and it needs 20000 repairs, I would pay up to 70% of 100, that's 70000 minus repairs, minus 20, would be 50000 Whatever you can get it for, I don't care. I will pay 50. Does that make sense? So if you can get it for 40, I'll pay you 50. You made 10. 
If you get it for, 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 for 55, I'm not going to pay any more than 50. So you can buy, a, a cash buyer will pay 70 cents on the dollar minus repairs. Quick and dirty math. There's more we'll go into at the workshop, but that's your quick, quick answer. Okay. All right. Um, let's go through another strategy. I got time for one more. This one's going to be more complicated and frankly, more interesting. It's a strategy called buying property subject to the mortgage. This is buying real estate with no money and with no credit. I am a nationally recognized expert at teaching this strategy. I could possibly be the national expert. I am certainly a national expert. I'm not sure anybody's as successfully taught as many people that have actually gone out and done this. There's people, a lot of people teach it. I don't know if anybody's taught as many people. I've taught literally tens of thousands of people that have actually done it. So what does this mean? How does this work? How does real estate work? When somebody buys real estate, how does that work? They go to a title company, they sign a stack of documents. Most of the documents are disclaimers and disclosures, but there's two documents that get signed at the closing that make the closing happen. The two documents that make the closing happen are the deed and the note. A deed and a note. Now notice these are two separate documents, a deed and a note. Whose ever name goes on the deed, that's who owns the house. Whose ever name goes on the note, that's who's responsible for the mortgage. So there's a deed and there's a note, separate documents. Now normally the same guy goes on both. A guy buys a house, his name is on the deed, his name is on the note. He owns a house, he's responsible for the mortgage. That's normal. It's his house. He moves into the house, all the rights, privileges, responsibilities, and all the benefits of home ownership, they go to him. It's his house. He moves in the house, it's his house. At the end of the month, he gets a statement from the bank, says you owe us $2,000 for your mortgage, he writes the bank a check for 2,000, bank gets a check, they cash a check, bank's happy, he's happy, everybody's happy, that's how it works. And then let's say the guy goes on to get married. Well, you know, Texas is a community property state. So when the guy gets married, the wife is added to the deed. Now there's two names on the deed. Look in the tax records, his and hers, right? But his name is still the only name on the note. Just because somebody's added to the deed, that does not affect the note. And then time goes on and things don't work out and they get a divorce. And in their situation, the wife gets the house in the divorce. So now something kind of interesting has happened. Now, her name is the only name left on the deed, but his name is still the only name on the note. So the question is, as long as he keeps sending a check to the bank every month, or she starts sending the bank a check every month, or a property manager, a tenant, investor, neighbor, friend, or family member, or somebody sends the bank a check every month, the question is, does the bank actually care who wrote the check? No. There's some dude sitting at the bank getting paid $9.82 an hour opening envelopes. He's like, oh, we got a check. It's for the right amount. It came on time. It cleared. We're good. So if you're all listening to my story so far, I just told you all a story about a woman, about a spouse, about a person that was able to acquire real estate, even with no money and with no credit. There it is. I told you I was going to teach you how to acquire real estate with no money and no credit. An example, right? All right, so here's a really, really good part. You could all do exactly the same thing and you don't have to get married to do it. Because here's the deal, guys, and you're gonna love this. Anybody, anybody, anybody here, anybody, anybody can go up to any homeowner, right, that has any loan from any lender on any house at any time and you can make them an offer. And the offer any of you can make with any homeowner that has any loan, any mortgage from any lender on any house at any time is this. Here's the offer. I will make the payment on your mortgage for you going forward. Or I will find somebody to make the payment on your mortgage for you going forward. What's the catch? The catch is you simply have to transfer the deed, which is ownership of the property to me. It's called buying a property subject to the existing mortgage. You can do this with any homeowner that has any loan from any lender on any house at any time. And the only person that, can, uh, that has to agree to this transaction is the person whose name is on the deed, not the bank. The bank has absolutely no say in this transaction. There are federal laws that regulate this transaction. Anybody can transfer their deed to anybody. Anybody can pay somebody else's mortgage if they want to. So if you're listening to me closely, here's what you just heard me say. 
you can buy any house in Texas from any homeowner in Texas that has any loan from any lender, and you can even buy that person's house even with no money and even with no credit by simply offering to take over the payment on their mortgage or even offering to find somebody to take over the payment on the mortgage in exchange for them simply transferring the deed, which is ownership of the property to you. But once you learn how to buy real estate, hold the questions in a minute. Once you learn how to buy real estate with no money and no credit, then how many houses can you buy? All of them. When somebody's in financial distress, they have a house, they have a mortgage. Is the house the problem or is the mortgage the problem? Owning a house is never a problem. Being responsible for a mortgage, that can be a big problem when you're in financial distress. If you solve the big problem, take over the payment or find somebody to take over the payment in exchange for solving the big problem, you ask the seller to transfer the deed, which is ownership to you. So it's simply agreeing to pay a seller's mortgage in exchange for the deed. Now, once somebody gives you their deed, you own it. You can do whatever you want with it. You can renovate it, retail, sell it to somebody else. You can wrap it, assign it, keep it as a rental property. You can keep it as your homestead if you want. I've helped many of my friends here in Texas buy their very own homestead with this little or no money, no credit needed strategy. How much money can you make? Well, you're going to see there's a lot of ways you can make a lot of money once you're buying properties with no money and no credit. Small flip, at least ten or 15000 typically a lot more. And this is yet another little or no money, little or no risk strategy. Let me show you an example of a deal. So this is one of the $30 million worth of houses that I personally own here in Texas. And I got to tell you, if I were going to go buy $30 million worth of houses traditionally, I'd have to put 20% down every time I bought a house. In other words, I'd have to be a multi, multi, multi millionaire just to become a millionaire. Well, I wasn't a millionaire when I was sitting in these chairs myself 20 years ago. So then how was I able to buy $30 million worth of houses? Well, most of them were bought using this trick I'm teaching you right now, including this one. So let me tell you about this one. A woman owned this house worth $150,000. She only owed $110,000 on the mortgage. So this house has $40,000 in equity. She had the house rented out for $1,600 a month. The mortgage payment, PITI, was $1,100 a month. So this house is generating $500 of gross cash flow. It should have, and it could have, and it would have been a perfect rental property, except for one major problem. This woman had lost her job. She was continuing to collect the rent because she was living off of the rent, but she stopped paying the mortgage. Four days, four days before the first Tuesday of the month, when the bank was going to foreclose on her, I knocked on her door. Can I help you? I am here to help you. Well, what can you do? There's no time. They're going to foreclose on me. How can you help? They're going to foreclose on me. There's no time. What can you do? How can you help? Here's what I can do. I can stop the foreclosure. I can reinstate your loan. I can catch up your mortgage payments. I can make your mortgage payments for you going forward. I can even repair all of your credit. Well, that's amazing. What's the catch? You simply have to hand the deed, which is ownership of the property to me. And she said, deal. Why in the world did she say deal? Because of what I said next, right? She wasn't just going to lose the house. She knew she was going to lose the house. That was a done deal. But in addition to losing the house, she was also going to get a bonus to go along with it. What's the bonus called? A foreclosure. And here's what I told her, and here's what I'll tell you. You don't want a foreclosure. You may think a foreclosure is the end of your problem. It's not. It's the beginning of a 10-year nightmare that starts with the sheriff and his deputies dragging you and your family and all of your possessions to the curb in front of your friends and neighbors. It's 10 years of dealing with the IRS, potentially garnishing your wages to collect at a 1099 that could be issued against you for up to the full value of your loan. It's 10 years of dealing with the lender, potentially filing a lawsuit against you for up to the full value of the home. It's 10 years of dealing with creditors calling you, hounding you day and night to collect on the judgment from the lawsuit. It's 10 years of not being able to buy another home, not being able to buy a car, not being able to get a credit card, not being able to open certain bank accounts or even rent certain apartments or even get certain jobs. And nobody wants all that. And I stopped all of that from happening to her. And she was thrilled. She even said thank you. And the bank was thrilled because they didn't want the house back. They just wanted their money. So I gave them their money. And the tenants were thrilled because they didn't want to get kicked out of the house. They just wanted to keep renting the house. So I let them keep renting it for me. But mostly I was thrilled 
because for $4,500, which is what it cost me to reinstate this loan, I now own this beautiful $150,000 house. It came with a loan, came with $40,000 of equity, all mine, came with tenants, paid me $1,600 a month rent. After I paid the bank $1,100, I put $500 in my pocket. And if you think that's cool, my wife and I own $30 million worth of these houses. Some of them took small amounts of money like this. Honestly, most of them took more money than this. But then some of them took absolutely no money at all. How many of you would like me to walk you step by step by step through how to do this deal? Yeah. All right, we're all out of time. <laughs> all right, we're almost out of time. I'll finish. I do love this deal. It's one of my favorite. This strategy is my second favorite. But I'll, I'll bet you don't know why I love this so much. Some of you are like, oh, you're making 500 a month. Yeah, that's not it. $500 is not going to affect my life or my lifestyle at all. What I love about this is that by doing this over and over and over again, over the last 20 years, my wife and I were able to accumulate a portfolio that's now worth $30 million. In fact, just over the last three years, that portfolio went up in value by more than 30%. In other words, just over the last three years, my wife and I became more than $10 million richer from having done this thing over and over again, this thing that required little or no money and no credit. That's what I love about this. This is the strategy that enables anybody, right, regardless of money or credit, to become multi, multi, multi millionaires. Because I'm going to tell you, you want to become a multi, multi millionaire, you have to do this in a scalable way. You don't have enough money to buy $30 million worth of houses. You don't have enough credit, even if you had the money, to acquire $30 million worth of houses. How do you get $30 million worth of houses? This is how you get $30 million worth of houses. You have to use other people's money. You have to use other people's credit. And once I realized the wealth potential of this, I actually made one additional tweak to this strategy. I no longer buy these houses in my name. In fact, I no longer buy these houses in my company's name. Now when I buy these houses, I prefer to buy them in my IRA. How many of you were aware that you could do this transaction with your IRA? Okay, well, for the rest of you, you know you can do this transaction with your IRA. You saw that little pop-up earlier, Directed Trust IRA. Come to the workshop. We will set it up so you can do this with your IRA. So what happens when my IRA does this deal? My IRA issues the $4,500 investment reinstatement fee to the bank. The deed transfers to my IRA. Every month, the property manager deposits $1,600 of rent into the IRA. Every month, the IRA issues a check automatically to the bank to pay the mortgage for $1,100, and $500 goes back into the IRA. But that's not the good part. So then what's the good part? Over the next 25 years, this property will double in value, and it'll double again. And even at very, very conservative appreciation rates, it'll almost double a third time. Something interesting happens to the loan over the next 25 years. What happens to the loan? gets paid off by the tenants. Thank you very much, tenants. In other words, every time my IRA does this deal, my IRA ultimately ends up owning an asset worth about a million bucks that by then I own free and clear. Okay. See you guys at the workshop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, and because my IRA, by the way, is also a Roth IRA, when I sell that asset in retirement, 100% of the proceeds are tax-free. Did you all just see what I did? Hold it. I'll take the questions in just a minute. I just showed you how to turn a $4,500 IRA into $1 million tax-free doing one deal one time, helping a woman out of a horrible situation, helping a, a bank not take a property back they didn't want back, helping a tenant stay in a property they wanted to stay in, all that doing it just once. The average retired person at the age of 65 has a net worth of $62,000. It's pathetic. You do this one deal one time, you're 25 times richer than the average retired person but I've never seen somebody do this once. 95% of the people will never do this deal. And 100% of the people that do it once, then what do they do? And they do it again, and then what do they do? And then they do it again, and then what do they, and then they do it again. And 20 years later, they're standing behind a podium at a Hilton talking about all the times they did it. Yeah. Remember I said I was gonna show you how to get a 3% mortgage with no money down and no credit check? Where do you get that? This is it, guys. Find somebody that three years ago got a 3% interest that is in financial distress and can't afford to pay their mortgage. You say, I'll stop your foreclosure and pay your mortgage for you. You just got a 3% loan without a credit check and maybe no money down. 
I mean, that's how you do it, guys. That's exactly how you do it. Um, so how many of you would like me to walk you step by step by step through how to do this deal? Right, I'm going to walk you step by step by step through how do you find the property, how you get it under contract, which contract we use, which attorney and title company we close at. I'm going to walk you step by step by step through all of those steps, okay? But it's going to take about three days, so we're going to have to finish at the workshop. <laughs> yeah. And obviously, it's a pretty cool strategy. Yeah, that's just one of the 12 strategies. Uh, my favorite is flipping, is uh, remodeling houses for free. But there's uh, 11 other strategies, 65 marketing methods. So close, I just taught you first close. I was literally called the atomic bomb close. Uh, that was one of the 10 closes. Literally, I found that woman on that list. So you get those lists. You talk to the woman on that list. You read that script. I mean, this, in my, this is how an engineer thinks. Call a number, read a script, hands you a deed, says, thank you for taking my house. I mean, think about that. I mean, that's how I think about it, right? Find that person in that situation. Read that script. That's the solution to the problem. They give you the house and say, thank you. I mean, it doesn't work every time. There's a numbers game, but I'll teach you the numbers. But that's how this business works. And you're helping them. They said, thank you, right? Because if she hadn't deeded the house to me, she would have gotten the bullet to the head. Nobody wants a bullet to the head. So um, you can come online. You can come in person, uh, Austin, Dallas, Houston. Um, please join the RIA. It's only $100. You get preferred seating. You get all kinds of bonuses. You become a member of the organization. That's how you can interact with me and all the other members. And you get some special training and a bunch of other stuff as well. Some logistics, okay? These are the dates. Uh, let's just do a quick poll of the audience. How many of you are gonna come live? Who's gonna come live? Raise your hand if you're gonna come live. How many are you gonna come online? Who's coming online? We got a couple of lines. Why are you coming online? Just out of curiosity. Work schedule. Work schedule. Yeah. Call in sick, you know. Life changing. Oh, well then definitely come live. <laughs> All right, giving you a hard time. Um, but yeah. Uh, so uh, fill out the form. If you do it right now, you get it for free. You guys online, fill out the form right now online. If you do it right now, it is free. Uh, please join the RIA. If you can't afford it, I don't want your last $100. But if you can afford it, you definitely want to do it. And it's for a great cause. Only this network uh, supports the rights of real estate investors. We spend literally a lot of money on, on legislative action. So it's really important. And all the other benefits. And I'll take questions in just a minute. I do want to finish some things up. Uh, this is another really cool, when you join the RIA, we have some of these really cool posters, and we have some out front. This is the 273 things you need to know about being a real estate investor. So this is what happens when an engineer becomes a real estate investor. Sorry. I said it's not complicated, there's just a lot of details. So I made a poster, like these are all the different uh, strategies, all the different marketing campaigns, all the different analysis, due diligence, all the different operations, power teams, corporate structures, all the different finance, all the different analysis, due diligence. This is a poster. We have some of these posters outside. So if you join the RIA, you also get one of these posters. You can hang on the wall. And then when you come to the workshop, I'm going to teach you how all this stuff works. Um, so do join the RIA and get your poster amongst all the other benefits. Uh, so fill out the form. For you guys online, if you register right now online, when you come to the event, we'll give you the poster there. For you guys here live, you get the poster right now if you join the RIA. Uh, a couple of other quick announcements, and we'll take some questions. Yes, we post all of our presentations onto our social media. We're on Instagram, YouTube, and uh, Facebook. Just look for Texas RIAs if you want to get copies or just stay in tune with what's going on. As far as the details of the workshop itself, I teach the entire thing myself. I'm there from dusk to dawn. I start talking at about 8.45 a.m., get there at no later than 8.15 or 8.30, and get a good seat, uh, become a VIP by just joining the RIA. And um, we do 24 hours over three days, but it's not the same amount every day. We go late Friday, late Saturday, early Sunday. How late? Kind of depends on you and how many questions you ask. Probably around 7.30, I'm going to guess. So be prepared to stay late Friday, late Saturday, and early Sunday. Bring a notebook. This is really important. You are going to fill an entire notebook with notes. This is entertaining, but it's not an entertainment. Okay, this is a life-changing experience. I'm literally going to take each of you through different exercises. I'm going to ask you questions, right? And you're going to write down in your notebook. You're going to walk out of there with a plan that is unique to you. A marketing budget of hours and dollars applied to different activities, right? We, we're going to build a system together that's unique to each of you right there at the workshop. So bring a notebook, ask questions, stay engaged. 
I tell everybody I'm not there to entertain you, it's entertaining, but I'm there to change people's lives. So if you're going to be online, turn on your camera, ask questions, be engaged. A couple of quick questions, how much experience do I need? 75% of the people that come to the workshop are newbies. 25% uh, are experienced investors, but they're coming to learn some of the advanced strategies that only we have. Can I bring significant other? Highly recommend you drag them by force if necessary. And I'll tell you why. Because if you don't, you're going to regret it. Because I tell you what's going to happen. I'm going to teach you all this advanced stuff, and then you're going to go use it, and you're going to go home, and you go, honey, guess what? We're buying a house. And what is honey going to say if she was not at the workshop? Yeah, what are you, crazy? Is that even legal? You know. I, I, I've had so many stories of people that dragged their spouse. The spouse was so fascinated, they were the ones that picked up the ball and ran with it. Right? It will be interesting. But even if they're not interested, by exposing them to it, they're going to be more supportive. Um, uh, so yes, and, and you don't have to pay extra. If you join the RIA, you're both VIPs. So you get two for one. So join the RIA, bring your spouse even for, uh, for VIP. Um, how do I know this is the real deal? My advice is don't ask me. How about you ask somebody that's done it already? I actually invite everybody I teach to give me feedback, and we do a handwritten feedback form because you can't fake that. Do not believe feedback you see on the internet. And we scan 100% of the feedback forms, and we post them on the internet, thousands of them. Why would I post every feedback form, no matter what anybody writes on it, on the internet for the whole world to see? Go look for yourself and I'll tell you what you will see. Thousands of feedback forms, and they pretty much 99 out of 100 say the same thing. Oh my God, this was literally a life-changing experience. I can't believe what I learned there. Right? You know, believe me, go look. Uh, where do I get my tickets? When you fill out the form, they're gonna take the, the form. There's a, you keep one half, they take the other half. They're gonna give you a little packet with your tickets. You'll also get an email and a uh, text with the information on the logistics. Uh, pick your date, and uh, we're also going to RSVP you right before, so you get a little text or phone, you know, to verify. We need to know how many people are live, how many people are in person. If for some reason you have a last-minute change-up where you have to cancel or something, we can schedule you for a future event, okay? But uh, we'll RSVP you right before the event. Uh, and then finally, uh, what if I want even more help? That's why you join the RIA. That's where you can interact with me and all the other members of this organization. Please join the RIA. Uh, so that is basically it.